Here's the second of my absolute beginner Blender tutorials. If you are totally new, I encourage you to go back and watch the first that explains the workspace and the navigation. But if you're ready, let's go ahead and start modeling the lantern. You can't have multiple projects open at the same time in Blender, but you can have multiple scenes. If you want two full projects open at the same time, you can just go back to your applications menu and open a second instance of Blender and switch back and forth. But I'm just gonna quickly open up a new scene so I can jump back to the finished scene if we want to see it, but you don't have to do this step. I'm going to switch to solid view to start. Yours probably looks all gray and that's fine, but I like to turn on this random color mode and make a few changes that make it easier to see what's going on. In solid mode, find this tiny down caret that opens up the settings for this view mode. All the other modes have their own settings and you should explore those. For solid view, I have mine set to flat lighting, random color, and have shadow and cavity checked on. The random color means that every new object added to the scene will be randomly assigned a new kind of pastel color. This just makes it easier to see the objects, especially once your scene gets crowded. The cavity adds a kind of simple bevel and ambient occlusion that just makes it easier to see edges. These are all totally optional, so poke around here and see your options. And while we're at it, let's add the move gizmo that appears when I select things. Also completely optional, but I think this is a good idea to have on, especially when you're new for several reasons. Find the little icon that kind of looks like a bow and arrow and click on that down carrot and just check move. And then make sure that the bow and arrow are still blue at the end, blue or turned on things in Blender. So now when you select an object, the move gizmo will appear. This makes it easy to see which object is selected, and you can see where the pivot point is, that's the little orange dot. And then you can also just grab any of these arrows and yank the object around in any axis direction, knowing that you aren't accidentally moving it in another direction, something that's very easy to accidentally do in perspective view. This is the same icon that appears when you click over here. These four buttons are move, rotate, and scale, and then all three of them combined. Sometimes using these three gizmos is handy, but you'll probably just want to learn the keyboard shortcuts for G, G for grab or move, S for scale, and R for rotate. These hotkeys are so useful because you're going to be using these things all the time. And if you have to go over here and click on these buttons constantly, that's going to add a lot of wasted time over a big project. These two are for making notes and measuring. And this one is kind of fun if you're just roughing out a scene. It allows you to click and drag to add objects, very much like SketchUp. Up on the top here is the selection tool. There are several selection modes and you can toggle between them using the W key. Tweak is the basic select mode. It's also really easy to accidentally hit the W key while you're working and then suddenly your cursor is behaving really oddly. If you notice that happen, make sure that you're still in the tweak mode. And you can just hit the W key again or you can reach up here and select it from the list. This last one is the 3D cursor. To move the 3D cursor, all you need to do is hold down shift and right click. So you'll probably never use this button. The 3D cursor does a lot of things, but the most common one is just like a cursor in a text document. Wherever your cursor is in your text is where the letters will appear when you start to type. Well, the same thing is true with the 3D cursor. If I shift A and add a new object, it will appear where the 3D cursor is. If you hold down shift and S, you get a pie menu that can do some very useful things for the 3D cursor. Right now, I'm just going to choose cursor to world origin so that it snaps back to the 0, 0, 0, X, Y, Z, axis or the center of the world. All right, let's finally make this lantern. Right now we are in object mode, so I can move, rotate, and scale my cube, but nothing I do will be able to make it anything other than a cube. But if I reach up here and select edit mode from this list, I get a whole bunch more options. And here's a really essential keyboard shortcut. You wanna hit the tab key to toggle back and forth between object and edit. You don't wanna to have to reach up here to do this every time, because again, that's one of those things that you're gonna be doing constantly. There are a couple of ways to tell when you are in edit mode. First of all, it says so in that same drop down menu. You'll also notice that there's a lot more buttons down the left side of the screen and that the selected object has orange dots and edges around it. Don't worry too much about all the buttons. You'll learn the keyboard shortcuts for almost all of these eventually, and that's much faster than hunting around for the buttons all the time. However, just like everything else, it can be useful for learning what's here and remembering the shortcuts if you forget. If there's a little triangle in the corner, hold down the left mouse button to open open up variations on the tool, just like in Photoshop. The first thing we want to do to our cube is to squash it down to make it the base of the lantern. There are a lot of ways to do that, but since we've turned on the move gizmo already anyway, there's a very fast and intuitive way to do that. In edit mode, 
we can move the vertices and the corners of polygons, but we can also move the edges. And we can also just grab a face and move that around. And we can scale, rotate, and divide, and do all sorts of things. I'm jumping between these modes right now by clicking the one, two, and three keys on the main keyboard. So exclamation point, at sign, and hashtag right above the letters, not the keys on the number pad. That'll move your screen around. Number one is vertices, two is edge, and three is face. You can also reach up here and click these buttons, but again, that's gonna slow you down. However, you can hold the shift key down and click on multiple modes at the same time if you want to, but that can get confusing for a beginner. So right now, hit the three key and make sure that the third icon is blue. Remember, blue is selected or active, right? Okay, so now simply click on the top face of the cube and our move gizmo appears if you turn it on at the beginning of the video. To squash down the cube, just click on the blue arrow and move it down. This way you won't accidentally move the face in any other direction. Just push it down so that it's about a third of the height that it was. So now I wanna add this little sloped area over here. And there are again, several ways to do that. But let's just hit the E key to extrude a new face. E to extrude, super common one, you wanna learn that one and just move your mouse up a little bit and left click when you're happy. And we have left the edges of the original cube in place, but we've added five more faces to our object. And that lets us hit the S key now, S to scale. And then we're gonna move the mouse toward the object and that's gonna make that top face about half as big as it was. So just sort of trombone it in there a little bit until you like it. When you like what you have, left click to set it. You can also hit enter or return. If you change your mind and you wanna make it bigger or smaller, just select it, hit the S key again, and make your adjustment. So now you can grab the blue arrow of the move gizmo and move it up and down to change the angle if you want. And now to get that post bit in the middle, just hit the E key to extrude again with that top face selected and pull out the other set of faces. Now just do the same thing again, but scale outward. So E to extrude, move it up a little bit, and left click, and then you can always use the move gizmo again if you want to adjust it. But now hit the S key to scale outward by moving the cursor away from the object this time. And then hit the left mouse or enter and return to set it. And then E to extrude again and move up the face to make that main part of the lantern. And then click when you're happy. Okay, now this next bit is a little tricky, so watch me first before you try it. The roof of the lantern overhangs at a perfect 90 degree angle, so the extrude up a bit and then scale trick won't work here. What we need to do is extrude a face and drop it right on top of that existing face. So I'm gonna hit the E key and then immediately left click, or even better, hit enter or return. So now when I hit the S to scale and move the cursor away from the object, I'm scaling that second face. And you can see that it left the other face where it was. I can now hit the E key and pull it up a little bit to make the edge of the pyramidal roof, and then left click or enter to set that new extrusion. And there's a couple of different ways to make the pyramid on top. So, but by far the easiest is just to do what we've been doing and hit the E key to extrude and pull it up to the height of the top of the pyramid. And now just hit the S key to scale and push in the top. And don't make it too tiny or that will cause a small problem later on. So something like this is good. We're almost done, but I wanna inset the four sides of the lantern. So stay in face mode and select one of the vertical faces of the lantern by clicking on it. Now hold the shift key and select the other face. And you can see that we have two faces selected. Now use the middle mouse button and orbit around to the other side if you want to, or if you want to be flashy, you can hit the nine key on your number pad and then uh, hold down the shift as you select the other two faces in the back. You want all four of them selected. Now hit the I key to inset like we did before. We're affecting all four faces as they're all insetting toward the center of all of them. We want each face to individually inset. So let's look down here in the lower left for the adjustment palette and then click on a little V if you need to open it up. And notice that there is a checkbox labeled individual. Click that and you will see that all the faces are now insetting independently, which is what we want. So keep them all selected. We need to extrude, but we will have a similar problem if we just hit the E key now. So this time we wanna hit Alt E and a little pop-up menu that appears that gives us uh, various versions of the extrude command. And from this list, choose either extrude along normal or extrude individual. In this case, they'll do the same thing. Move your cursor to push in the faces a touch and be careful not to move them so far that they start intersecting with each other, but then click when you're happy. 
Now hit the tab to get out of edit mode into object mode and orbit around your lantern using the middle mouse button. Nice job. Let's do one last thing before we end this video. With your lantern selected, click on the blue wrench or spanner if you're from the part of the world that puts extra U's in words. Click on the add modifier and you'll see a big menu of stuff that you can do to your mesh. The one we're after this moment is bevel. It's the second column, second from the top. I'm gonna to switch to wireframe so you can better see what's happening. You don't have to be in wireframe to do this, I'm just doing it so you can see what's going on. Add the bevel modifier and a bunch of options will appear below. Find the segments and set it to three. And by the way, there are several different ways of changing the values in these fields. In this case, just click the right arrow twice to get to three segments, but you can simply click in the field and type a number. You can even do math. You could type in 12.5 backslash two and get, you know, divide, you know, divide by two and get 6.25. But that's not gonna work here as we need an integer for the number of segments, but you can do that in a lot of fields. You can also click and drag on the field from left to right and scrub through the values. Hold the shift key down while you do that if you want finer control. In this case, you just need to set the segments to three and that's all we need. And notice what that's doing to the edges. Instead of there being a razor sharp edge, they now all have a gentle rounding. So it looks more like a stone lantern instead of a computer generated object with perfect edges. It's offset the original edges with three extra edges. The amount slider will make these lines closer or wider together. They can only go so far apart before they start turning geometry inside and out. And then that's the little point at the top of the roof there. If you made that point of the roof too small, it's gonna start doing that really soon and you won't have a lot of room to maneuver. But otherwise you should be able to scale it up a little bit and get some nice rounding. You can also always go back, if you're having that problem, just go back to the top of your roof and select that top face and just hit the S key to scale it up a little bit to give yourself some more room. But it's gonna run into other corners eventually. So unlike the commands that we do in the viewport, this modifier will sit here non-destructively for as long as we want. And we could go on and model the rest of the scene and then come back here and change this again hours from now. So that's a lot for now. Save your work and join me in the next one where we will add the rocks and the beach and learn some new ways to model.